as we move forward whatever subject whatever topic we are picking the sound too and the let the, the script too how did it evolve the number system had developed much much earlier in different parts of the world in different ways uh, yeah so when europe discovered the base 10 number system they adopted it the europe the whole of europe slowly and steadily adopted none of the other number systems other than the european indo indo arabic european number system has zero now riemann was the person who connect, uh, like uh, he worked on prime numbers and stuff my name is p anirudh chakravarty this is my telegram id if you want to contact me and ask me about anything feel free to do that i will definitely reply to your messages i love replying by the way i enjoy talking to you guys and my uh, i have done my bachelor's of mathematics in indian statistical institute bangalore i done my masters as well in indian statistical institute but in kolkata and for the past 2 years i have been helping aspirants uh, for the exams uh, like amc 8 10 12 nmtc stage 2 and i have also guided students for isi and cmi exam preparations hello everyone welcome to this new series where we are going to explore number theory now this is the first video and the i didn't want the first video to be completely uh, you know calculation and directly all the subjects i wanted all of us to understand why are we studying this i'll try to do this for each and every subject right as we move forward whatever subject whatever topic we are picking i'll do this and in this video uh, we will talk about what is number theory like how did the subject evolve right and why are we studying it and what are the usage what is the modern you know really is this really useful am i really doing this for something or not so i'll try to explore it from the very beginning till the modern modern time so let's begin now what is a number recently a student has asked me this uh the, what is counting he asked something but then he said that he derived that number is something which is used for counting so it's not just counting i said a sound and a symbol together denoting a measurement so everything which can be measured can be written in terms of numbers so the number is nothing but something which humans have developed to be able to measure stuff we wanted to measure we wanted to you know i have one finger two finger three finger so the number 1 which i am saying and the the script 1 both come together to mean something which is you know one single and when i am writing two I'll, it should mean the the sound two and the let the the script two should together mean something which are twice so then he asked uh, all numbers cannot be written or measured right how what about irrational numbers and all that so i said yeah we can measure irrational numbers man i mean if you think about it we can measure root 2 so maybe i'll draw it a little bit so maybe if i have you know an isosceles right angle triangle with 1 and 1 this will be root 2 right fair enough and it is also true that uh, i can measure pi can we measure pi so if i if i take a circle and i have a rope which is you know in the form of circle and somehow i manage to get the radius to be 1 or maybe 1 by 2 1 by 2 units of radius is possible so the circumference will be 2 into pi into 1 by 2 which is pi so if i take a rope and you know take the circumference i can actually measure pi also so numbers are basically uh to do come on what is this okay so numbers are basically sound and a symbol coming together to denote a measurement now how did it evolve we want to think about it i want to think about it how did it evolve there were several number systems developed 
uh, you know, in the world independently. Because the world earlier in the ancient times was not really connected as connected as now, right? Of course, because, uh, you know, uh, traveling through sea and all developed much later. If you think about it, they all came much after a lot of, you know, actual scientific things, mechanics were discovered and implemented. So, the number system had developed much, much earlier in different parts of the world in different ways. For example, the ancient Babylonians used, uh, you know, base 60. So, for example, now what we use today is base 10, which I have written here. It, it was derived from the uh, Indian Arabic, Indo-Arabic system. Okay, but uh, we'll go one by one. I'll show you the symbols as well. So, they used uh, base 60. So, there one set, like we, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which are 10 digits. They had 60 digits. <laughs> so, they used that because they found something natural to them, 60 to be a natural number. And Egyptian uh, no, number systems were there, Roman number systems are there, which don't particularly have any base as such. Right, if you see Roman number system, it is just one, two, three, four. Like we know Roman numbers, right? The letters I, V, um, L, C, M, all these letters, they come from these and they don't particularly have any base as such. Uh, there is a Mayan number system, Mayan civilization used base 20 numbers. And the Arabic and Indian civilization had been using base 10 numbers. They had been using base 10 numbers and eventually when, when Europeans came and, uh, you know, Europeans came to learn about this base 10 and they found it actually quite natural because we have 10 fingers. It is actually easy to count numbers, you know, in base 10. If you don't know what base is, don't worry. This is just for information. Base, uh, we will learn about bases. We will learn about changing bases and everything. So, don't worry about that. Now, uh, yeah, so when Europe discovered the base 10 number system, they adopted it. The Europe, the whole of Europe slowly and steadily adopted the base 10 number system. And this is how they look. So, you know, this is the Babylonian number system. This is the Egyptian, Egyptian, sorry, Egyptian number system. Uh, this is the, oh, sorry. If that is the Egyptian one, what was the, this one? Mayan number system. This is the Mayan number system. I'm so sorry. So this is the Egyptian number system. This is the Mayan number system. Roman numerals are here. And you have this, how, how European numbers, you know, developed. How European number system developed, you can see here. In Devanagari, in Indian, we wrote, write, we used to write it like this, base 10. Tamil also used to uh, use the base 10 only. 10 letters and Europeans kind of adopted it. The modern version of numbers are basically coming from that. Now, if you see one thing, you can see that the ancient number system was pictorial in nature. Isn't that kind of natural? That's kind of obvious that they would, you know, pictureize numbers. So two would mean some twice. And because they could not keep on writing all till 9, they used something else for something else, some other number. We cannot keep using 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 like that. That's why Roman also has X for 10, V for 5, because we cannot keep writing I, 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 I. You understand? So they developed different letters. So that's how, like, think about how numbers would have developed. That's such a fascinating thing, isn't it? You, you have the tally way of writing numbers. So a 5 can be categorized easily. And then suddenly you can write something else for some other number. Right? And, okay. So this is there, this is there. So these are all pictorials. Do you observe one more thing? None of the other number systems other than the European, Indo-Arabic Indo European number system has zero. Because as we all famously know that Aryabhatta was the one who discovered zero. Because the uh, other number systems, other civilizations probably didn't have the idea of shunya, didn't have the idea of nothingness. 
it is actually zero the number zero is not just like nothing it is it is a very philosophical concept actually so zero means nothing like is it possible that nothing can exist like here we still have air so we can still quantify it in some sense but can nothing exist so that is like that is the contribution of aryabhatta it's not the letter zero or the sound zero or something like that it's not the symbol zero Aryabhatta discovered the idea of nothingness. That was his contribution. And that was eventually implemented in the number system as well. It got integrated with us and the rest is history. So, and what did we, they do with those numbers? So, they also developed, uh, with the system, they developed certain, you know, theories. The number theory, which we call now, was not exactly there. But they had basic arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents, powers. They had all those things. They, they observed patterns. They saw what happens when you power something. When you multiply with 11, what happens? With, and like you take roots. Everything they tried to observe with whatever the basic knowledge they had. And those are kind of, you know, uh, marvelous observations uh, if you have seen in past in your life about Vedic mathematics it is not exactly Vedic it's not from the Vedas but somehow because it's Indian originated uh, it it was developed you know very recently but it is all based on the primitive the basic understanding of numbers right so the observation the patterns those are the things which they observed but then Slowly, the number system evolved. The number system, like the number theory, evolved beyond the system of numbers. In the 1600s, when the uh, the European Renaissance happened, right? European Renaissance. If you, you you must know that a lot of areas of human life got rejuvenated during that time. Art, science, maths, everything. And it was during that time that Fermat. Fermat is like the god of number theory. He, you'll see his name every now and then. No matter how advanced you go, no matter how beginner you are in number theory, you'll see Fermat's name. So he is considered the father of modern number theory and he gave a huge bundle of unproved theorems and conjectures in his initial days. So in his lifetime, his contribution was tremendous. He gave a lot of statements. And he didn't prove most of them, like most of them were unproved. Now, what happened then 100 years later, Euler comes. His name is pronounced Euler. It's not Euler. Right? So whatever. Euler proved a lot of Fermat's theorems, Fermat's statements. And then uh, that actually progressed the number theory much, much, much further. Right? So, uh, congruency and all that, everything. Euler, you know, he, he was the one who progressed the subject a lot. And then Gauss came in. You must have heard uh, the name of Gauss. You must have known this person. So, he gave this book. I am not daring to pronounce it. But that book, you know, he came around 100 years after Euler. That book is called are considered the Bible of modern number theory. So these are like the three giants of number theory, right? And like this is the medieval or modern, you know, evolution when the modern number theory was just kicking in. So this is 1600s, this guy, this guy is 1700s, this guy is 1800s. And then these three people had developed the number theory, like pretty much everything. Everything was developed and it was only extending now, Riemann was the person who connect, uh, like uh, he worked on prime numbers and stuff. Ramanujan, he, he, he spent his life with number theory. I mean, if you watch the movie, The Man Who Knew Infinity, you must watch it. Like it shows like whatever he is doing, it's all about observation of numbers, observation of patterns. He's doing something, something so unconventional, Ramanujan. Like it's an amazing experience just to think about what Ramanujan did. And in the modern times, after he met Hardy, he formalized all the things, all of his discoveries. And still date, 
the modern advanced modern number advanced modern number theory right advanced modern number theory uses ramanujan's results and beyond number theory his results are used okay what is the use of the advanced modern number theory whatever we are doing one simple usage i'm not writing many of them but one simple usage is modern cryptography rsa encryption is based on prime number factorization so it's like a big number if you are able to factorize that that will use prime number theorem which ramanujan and riemann in like they are you know centuries apart uh, sorry decades apart but uh, they independently worked on that primes prime numbers and all that um so if we we were able to you know prove riemann hypothesis that is related to prime numbers and that would make the encryp encryption very very you know solvable so so far because riemann hypothesis is not solved our encryption is very very strong so it's kind of very very advanced stuff even i probably don't understand i definitely don't understand all these things at you know certain depth but this is the general idea which i am giving you here so that's all for today this video is that's it this was the introduction i hope this encourages you to study this subject understand this subject much much better and we will start with the prime numbers and divisibility in the next video so this is where we begin right we begin at the very basic stuff if the foundation is clear if the basic stuff is clear then my dear friends we can do whatever we want we can do crazy stuff you know crazy stuff starts with you know first step chalo that's it bye bye jai hind